guys, welcome back to the show. This is Connery from Out of Work Outdoors. Today we're going to do a continuation of part one where I go over prices and features you get at those certain prices. Uh, the video has gotten a lot of traction, so I'm going to do a part two, and that's why I promised in part one. So here we go, part two. Part two is hopefully, well, actually, it doesn't even really matter. If you bought a unit or if you didn't buy a unit yet, part two is going to cover all that. It's going to cover installation. And this is probably the part that is the most important in this long series that I'm about to release. So be sure to subscribe. Be sure to, you know, click that like button and make sure you watch this entire video because every moment is going to be things have to be set up properly or you're going to just struggle on the struggle bus later. So be sure to watch it all because I go through very, very important things that even when, when I was a beginner uh, electronics person, uh, I kind of skipped over and there was, it was a mess later and I had to go back and get these fundamentals just right. And when your fundamentals are right, we can go out on the lake, you'll have a lot more trust in these things and you will have a much, much better time. So grab a drink. You can grab one of my cups if you want. Out of work, it's got a striper on the back. Uh, we're going to do the one with the bass in a bit, but so far it's a striper. So grab your drink and, uh, you know, listen to everything I got to say because it'll help you out. And trust me on this. A lot of this stuff is from a steak, and you don't want to make those mistakes that I've made. Okay? So, see you in a bit. You're back. You probably want to learn more about this thing. And I'll tell you what, uh, there's this little running joke between me and my click fishermen who run good fish finders where we know our equipment works. We know it's set up properly. And the running joke has always been there's a lot of crappy fishermen that will put out brush piles. And the bass fishermen will come and fish them, right? Because they have good electronics. You put out the brush piles, we'll find them, and we will. And we'll come and fish them. And I'm guilty of this because I, I've fished this one local lake, right? Uh, somebody put up five brush piles that weren't there last year. I go out there. I find them. I catch big fish, big bass off of them. And I think they noticed that I was fishing their, pro their brush piles. And then next week, they move their brush piles. I go back. I got waypoints on them. I go back. They're not there. At least I throw my worm out there and try to hit the brush pile. I don't, I don't hit it. So I go over these areas and the brush piles are missing. Well, it turns out he only moved it like 30 yards. So I found him again and started fishing him again. Caught some more fish. It's freaking, freaking crazy. Okay, so anyways, uh, that's what this episode is going to be about. Or at least is yeah, episode two. That's what it's going to be about. And we're talking fish finders, how to properly set them up, and how to, you know, add accessories to them. Make them work better for you. Did you buy one of these yet? If you guys did, uh, let me know in the link. I'd like you to let me know in the description. And uh, actually, leave, them, leave me a note in the comment so I know that you guys, I know who I'm talking to. So then the future parts, I know what kind of units I'm dealing with, right? So uh, there, if the guys are still undecided, uh, please watch this and then maybe even go back to part one, review that again. And like I said, I do have some links in those uh, video descriptions of part one to some of the units that I do prefer and I do recommend. So uh, check all that out. Actually watch part one too. If you haven't watched part one yet, don't watch this because it's probably gonna confuse the heck out of you. So watch part one, come back to this. So in this part, we're gonna talk about electronics, installations, and why it is so important at this stage to set everything up right. Uh, I'm gonna cover, like I'll, I'll flash in some videos. So this is like, my Stella. This is the 14 foot John boat that we've had for what five years now. And you run a 10 inch screen up in the front. And every time we go to the lake, people are always looking at me weird, like, man, your your fish finder is more expensive than your boat. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Thanks for noticing. You know, <laughs> it's kind of funny. And then on top of that, you know, this is the unit that, like I said, this is my personal unit that I run on my kayak. It's a Helix 8. It's a Gen 3. Love it. Runs a mega mega imaging. Uh, side imaging it's it's hot it's an it's an awesome feature uh, so if you have one of these let me know in the comments if you don't you know let me know what you got but regardless uh, I'm gonna cover installation so once you get one of these they're depending on which model you have the options might swing a little bit and it might not so 
uh, when you buy a fish finder, uh, majority of the time it will come with this bracket. I just call it the U bracket. This bracket right here, it's a U bracket. And it's got two two uh, knobs on the side that kind of just tightens them down. Uh, for the majority of the time, that's how most people will uh, mount their units. It's got four screw holes on the side, as you can see. Four screw holes. Actually, you can probably see from the back. I, I don't, I'm only using two right now because I'm, I'm all, this is on a kayak, so you don't have to actually uh, bolt everything down. But, yep. Mounting school holes, mount it to the flat surface, mount it to your deck, mount it to the side rail, you're, you're good, you're good to go. But here, most of the bigger units, they have, this one's not a good example, but a lot of the bigger units will have like these uh, screw holes where you can flush mount into your console. Like I know the, a lot of the 9 and 10 inch, 12 inch screens, they'll have that. So what that basically means is if you want to flush mount, uh, you have a console. This really applies to the, the basketball world. Uh, where they'll cut a hole or a rectangle, and then this actually, this actually just drops in, and then uh, the deck or or the surface of your whatever you're installing matches up to the lid right here, and you bolt from the back, and it actually looks really good. Hence the flush mount. Um, very popular basketball world, but for a lot of the other guys, you know, we don't have that. We don't even have a deck that's big enough to house one of these things. So for the most part, you will use just the standard U, the U, the U arm thing, you know. But for me, I like the ram mount. Um, I'm a big proponent of the ram mount. It's another sixty bucks. I'll have the links to Amazon down below so you can buy the one that I recommend. Uh, I really like this one and. It's a one and a half inch ball, so basically, if you have a screen that's bigger than five inch, get a one and a half. Once you hit the ten inch, get a two inch ball. Okay, so that's my rule of thumb on that. And I like the ram mounts just because when you mount them, you're not you're not restricted by the movement of the fish finder. You can you can have it mounted, but it could still do this. It could swing. It could turn. Whereas if you bolt it down, it's pretty much done. I mean, you could still move it this way. You can tilt it this way, but that's pretty much it. If it's flush mounted, it's done. It's it's one view. And the problem with that is if you have only one unit, you might want to need to turn it around. Because if you're in the front deck, you want to see it. If you're in the back, you need to turn it back. If you flush mount it, you can't do that. And that kind of goes into my next thing is can you afford two units or are you a one unit guy? like me I'm a one unit guy okay if you got the money put two units up front deck back deck you're, you're, you're basically good okay you're good to go not back deck uh, console console and front deck okay but if you're a one unit guy kind of like me um, you have to decide where you want to put it on the front or the back a lot of people say why can't you just move it well you can't just move it because the wiring is a, is a mess right so you're gonna have to pick and the way you decide that is actually pretty cool. It's a pretty simple uh, decision. Uh, you basically say, where do I spend 80% of my time? Okay, so let me break that down and we'll, to you and see what that means, all right? So if you like casting, the odds are you're going to want to put it in the front because you need to know where you're at. Uh, you need to know where your waypoints are at, which we'll talk about later. So you can cast to your waypoints, or say for, uh, yeah, waypoints can be rocks, stumps, whatever, underwater. You need to cast to it. You need to see where you're at in relationship to that waypoint before you make the cast, okay? But if you want to flip that 180, you're just a trolling guy. You know, you just troll half the time. If you're just trolling, man, you just basically want this right in your lap. As you're, you know, driving, or you're, if you got the tiller, you know, you just need to know where you're going, okay? So for the most part, you're just looking at this graph and you want to see, okay, I just passed over fish on my right side if you have side imaging. Or or if you are if you just got a basic units with 2D, you, you pass over fish, maybe, you're, maybe you're, uh, your lure that you're dragging is, uh, is coming in too hot. So you want to do figure 8 and you want to come back. So you just want to do figure 8 come back. Come back a little slower and then have the lure go through the school of fish. I mean, that's basically what you want to do, right? So depending on how you want to use it, you might want to place it in different areas. Now, so the, the, the electronics placement is important, but also there's two more things I want to talk about. And these two more things is going to be the mapping. 
Uh, the mapping is for the guys that basically are on the lakes or big enough rivers that these graphing companies have gone out and mapped the lake floor for you and they'll sell it to you in the form of SD card. And what you do is you take that SD card and you plug it in there. See how mine has two slots right there? Yeah, it's two slots. So for two slots, I actually run two different maps. For Hummingbird, Hummingbird has their own map called uh, Lake Master. And then there's this other company called Navionics, which is where they are available for all the brands. And for the most part, that's the one that uh, the majority of the fishermen out there are aware of, Navionics. So I'll shoot them. Uh, I'll shoot the Amazon links in the description so that's you guys can purchase them that ridiculous. way. Um, but yeah, topographic maps. It's very important. Why? Yeah, it's like that's another hundred to two hundred bucks, right? But why is it so important? That's I'll crazy tell you why. right there. It will, it will tell you yeah, where fish. fish are possibly gonna be. Oh yeah, so I need the boat. I ain't lying, okay? I've gone to, I've gone to lakes. Actually, I haven't even gone to some. Oh, lakes. got them. Uh, for example, go. um, see, last year we went to so Lake simple. Texoma. And even before getting on the lake, I was like, okay, I'm pretty sure post-spawn stripers are going to be in here, 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 or here. I had 10 spots mapped out before I even got to the lake, all right? So what, that's the power of mapping. Mapping basically tells you water depths and, heap, and you, oh yeah, water depths, hills, valleys, and creek channels. So, so it's, it's almost like imagining if there was no water in the lake and you can see where all the rocks are at or possibly where all the rocks are at where all the marinas are at where all the docks are at on the lake of course uh possible rivers that are running in where the dam is at you know things like that so in terms of what it does for you it helps make decisions for you it also helps you eliminate a lot of water it's also a big safety thing so if you're one of those guys that lives in these lakes that's you know as soon as you step off the bank at 30 feet deep yeah, all right. You'd be all right. But where I live, there's a lot of shallow islands. You could be in the middle of the lake. You could be 55 yards offshore. It might be two feet of water, you know. So so these maps, they actually, it's actually really good. Uh, uh, in terms of navi navigation, it's really good for that moment, too. And it's a safety thing, okay. So, uh, and also, if you have a map, you probably won't get lost, okay. So, if you go around bends and things like that, if you got a map, you can follow your bread breadcrumbs back. And and the thing I like about maps is uh, it can like I say, it helps predict stuff. So if you know, uh, for example, this is a great example. Right now, the hybrids are going crazy in one of my favorite lakes. Right, uh, one of the guides just posted up that they're catching them in 20 foot of water. 20. So, what does that mean to me? Okay, so if you want to go out there, you're just going to take your fish finder. You're going to get out there. You're going to highlight the 20-foot depths. Not just 20, but 15 to 25, okay? You want to highlight that depth, and you want to focus on that depth. Basically, what it does is the fish finder will highlight a blue... I'll try to flash some footage of this. A blue, like, shaded area on the entire lake that will be between 15 and 25 feet so you should focus your attention on that water depth okay so that's why mapping is so critical okay mapping also gives me a lot of other things too uh there's a lot of underwater bridges that are marked there's a lot of hazards that are marked there's a lot of foundations on water that's marked there's also areas of interest there's also uh gas stations that are marked you know the other marina gas stations the ones that have gas stations those are marked restaurants are marked you know i mean all those other things are marked okay so that's the good cool thing about mapping okay that's cool underwater homes are marked or they can, they can be discovered if you know how to do the highlighting and also uh creek channels you know if you know if you're so depending on what you are what you want to do right if you're a crappy fisherman you want to look for creek channels you can easily highlight creek channels if you're a striper fisherman, hybrid fisherman, and you're chasing that post-spawn bite, that's, you know, we're looking at hills and valleys at 20, 25 foot, easily, easy, to, easy, easy, to, easy, to, easy to find, right? So that's cool. 
Now, that's mapping. I highly recommend it. It's 150 bucks. You're not going to regret getting it, okay? Especially if you get it and you know how to use it, which I'll cover in a future video. Let me know if you guys want me to cover that, because that could be a whole video in itself. And, yeah, let's just, let's just leave it at that. Now, the other thing is, there's this thing called an external GPS. Uh, majority of the units that are going to be that $700 price range and up, they're going to have another port, probably, you know, one of these ports right here, that will accept an external GPS antenna. Uh, Humminbird just simply calls it a GPS puck. Uh, Lawrence calls it a pinpoint. Uh, I think Garmin just simply calls it GPS. And Rain Marine just calls it GPS, okay? Even though these units have a built-in GPS, if you're a serious fisherman, you still want to get the external GPS. Why? The I'll tell you why, okay? I feel like this GPS that's built in here is not as accurate, okay? So, what do I mean by that? Okay, so, so this GPS is built in. In my opinion, it's only accurate to about 10 to 15 feet. That's its accuracy range. You can get a little tighter than that, but I feel it feels like it's got a hard time narrowing it beyond that, okay? Where the external can get you down to three, three feet. So a lot of people say, okay, what's the difference between three feet and ten feet? Well, three feet, I figure it's a three foot radius, so it's actually more like six feet. Well, one one and a half foot. For a ten, it's ten. All the other is like five, five or, or or bigger. All right. So if you're marking a, if you're a bass fisherman, you want to mark a stump, a brush pile. A lot of times, the stump is only this big, right? If you're off by five feet, you're like way over there. Or you're like way over there. You're not going to hit it, so you have to throw your crankbait or your whatever at it four or five times before you hit it. Uh, the more accurate you are, the better you're going to be. So you want to hit it on the first. You want to hit it on the first try. And with the external GPS, you can do that. Okay, I've done it multiple times. And same thing with rocks uh, and things of that nature. And the other thing that's cool about it is if you get the external GPS that has a heading sensor on it or a compass on it, it actually draws your boat on the fish finder and the map can rotate around you so without it without without the external gps the the fish finder must be moving your boat must be moving for the uh for the map to advance and draw again otherwise the map can be doing this on your boat it, it's kind of weird but you'll see what i'm talking about if you run into that problem if you're already running into that problem then just go buy external gps it'll fix that problem but basically you want your well no idea you want your boat to be positioned here and you want the map to evolve and rotate around you so when you move so when you when your boat physically moves your picture of your boat stays still. The map revolves around you. You don't want to revolve around the map. That's a that's a major thing for me. Okay, so so say say you you bought it. You got the external GPS and you got the, your 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 uh, your transducer. Right? Where do you put it? Okay, so if you're a fisherman like me and you like to you know cast to the fish, more than likely you're going to install this on the front deck. Okay, and then you're going to take your puck and you're going to put it underneath your trolling motor it's one of those deployable trolling motors right you want to put it down there you run the wires up the shaft and all the way back to this guy okay you want to put the gps puck as close as you can get on the vertical scale to your uh to your to your transducer so say your transducer is here and your tro trolling motor shaft comes up you want to place it no more than three feet away from it the closer vertically to it vertically or horizontally the closer horizontally to it, the better. So this is your, this is your puck, right? You want to place a GPS puck directly on top of it. And I'll show you pictures of the kayak. My kayak, it's set up exactly like that. The more right on top you are, the more accurate everything's going to be. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Now, if you're on the back end, you will have to install... Usually, they supply the equipment for this, too. On the trolling motor side, they typically don't. But on the, on the back of the boat the bow of the boat uh they usually supply some type of mounting harbor you might have to go aftermarket depending on you know what you want there's a lot of options for that too but a lot of people especially the uh you know the the lesser tier or lesser than bass boat style the, the standard equipment's fine you have to kind of bolt it to your your boat and have it sit the, the major thing is 
you have to imagine your boat, if you're, especially if you're trolling, you know your boat's not going to sit flat. It actually tips up a little bit. Well, if it, if it tips up a little bit, you, you still have to have your transducer angled so it's flat. So if your boat's flat, the transducer will be like this. But when you're trolling, it has to be like that. That's the transducer. It's kind of key. And then on top of that, you put the GPS puck right above it. So, so I know. GPS puck is like another 150 and mapping is like another 150 so for 300 bucks plus the unit you want you know it, it does run a lot but then again you know it, this is the world of electronics it's not supposed to be cheap if you're going to make the jump you have to understand what you're getting yourself into and if you haven't purchased anything uh, you know make a decision now um so for the most part so for my setup see this this is a twelve hundred dollar unit Three, two cards actually at 150 a piece. It's like 1500 bucks plus a GPS puck. So the GPS puck is another. I actually got a pretty good deal, 50 bucks, brand new. But for the most, well, most of the guys, you're not gonna get that. Right? I bought it off eBay. It was I don't I don't know what happened. I think it gets a guy a spare or something. So I got a spare one. So I paid 50 bucks. But for the most part, it'll be 150. So after it's all said and done, you're probably looking, you know, 1600 bucks. Okay, so it's not it's not cheap. But then you have a unit, and you have it everything set up properly to the point where you can go out to the lake, you can start scanning, you will find fish, and once you find fish, you can make one cast or one troll, and you will catch fish. And when that moment happens, the light bulb goes off, and all these other light bulbs go off, and you are just like, I can't believe that just happened. I've never fished this way before, especially if you're fishing over 30 foot of water, and you see the fish, you cast to the fish, and they bite. It is very eye-opening. It is very, like, it just opens up your mind to the, the, the infinite world of possibilities of, you know what? I don't have to fish on the bank anymore. I can fish 30 feet of water and still catch fish. And that goes for crappies. It goes for bass. That goes for hybrids, stripers, white bass, walleye. It, I mean, once you get that door open and you, you, you run through it, I mean, it opens up the winters. It opens up the summers. It opens up the possibilities. So I hope you guys learned something from that. That's part two. I'll do a part three. Part three, I'm going to cover... Uh, what fish look like on the fish finder. All right. So if you want to know more about that, be sure to sub because that's going to be part three. It'll be coming out next couple of days. You don't want to miss it. And at the moment, I'm gathering a lot of footage on this stuff. So you'll see me talk about it and you'll see me uh, slide in some actual footage of what fish, what structure looks like, what rocks look like, what grass looks like, all of that. Okay. So stay tuned for the next one. All right, guys. See ya. Okay, so, so, if you didn't pay attention and you installed things wrong, okay, you did not take the little crumbs I fed you and you didn't do things exactly the way you were supposed to, okay? So, say you had your transducer installed in this area right here and you put your GPS over here, right? Say that's a, say that's a five foot gap. Okay, so this GPS, which could be this, if you're using the, the internal, which is a problem too, okay, don't get me wrong. If you use this, this is the problem you run into if you if you don't use a GPS. So keep this in mind if you don't use GPS or if your unit's too small and it doesn't have the capability of using GPS. So, so your unit's installed over here, right? It's probably five feet away from where the transducer's at. The transducer's at the back of the boat, and this is probably, uh, you know, a quarter way up the, the back of the boat. So you're looking at it like this, right? And you're doing your thing like, doo -doo 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 -doo. and then the transducer's back here. Well, the GPS is here, okay? So when you press the waypoint button, it's marking it over here, where your transducer's over there. Ideally, if you're gonna use this unit, you need to put the transducer right below it. But for the most part, they'll have the transducers placed like this. Hence, the external GPS, if it's installed right here it accounts for the transducer being so far back okay but if you don't have that then you have to be aware that when you every time you press the waypoint button and you're measuring a fish over here on the way back you gotta re you gotta remember that your fish is five feet behind that waypoint okay so if you're like okay that's fine 
But while on the way back, if you wait, if you mark another waypoint, now you need to remember that fish is five feet the other way, where the original fish is five feet this way. See where the confusion is going to come in. So depending on which direction you come in, you need to remember it's five feet or behind you. Okay, when you press the button. Now, if this is the first pass, you're going to understand it's five feet below or behind you. But if this is the second time in the lake, you're not going to remember that. So here's a whole bunch of waypoints that might not be might might not mean anything to you, especially if you try to mark stumps, trees, like little small clusters of rock or just a slight drop off or or a culvert that's underwater that's a very important one too um, so all those little things kind of play okay so and the other thing is um, depending if even if you have a GPS puck the external GPS puck there's a direction uh, arrow on it the direction arrow must be installed facing exactly forward to the boat your puck must also be installed. Well, not the puck, the uh, transducer. That, well, puck's here, transducer's here. Must also be installed as straight as you can. Imagine if you're a little off, right? And you're on side imaging. Side imaging shoots to the side of this thing. So your GPS might think, okay, when you see it on the, the screen, right? When you see it on the screen, it's 20 yards to the left. It's 20 yards, the fish finder thinks it's over here. Okay, thinks it over here, but since your sensor is crooked, it's actually over here. So once again, you run into that problem again. Okay, so I fixed a couple of boats that have these issues, and once you get that stuff kind of worked out, this is where the magic happens. This is when okay, you're running down a spot, right? You're cruising down. You see a fish, a group of fish, but that's a group of fish, group of stripers. The they're 50 feet out to the right. You don't see nothing below you. 2D, there's nothing in 2D. There's nothing. But you see it on the right side of your side imagery. You put a waypoint on it. As your boat's still going, you put a waypoint on it. You circle back. Get on the front deck. Get on the trolling motor. And you fire your first cast directly into the school. You get bit like that. Like the Lord never even hits the bottom. That is what we're striving to do okay so that's why i stress part two now is probably the most important part of all of them because i don't care how well you can see fish on this if you are not able to for one cast to that stump that brush pile that rock pile that culvert that's underwater and hit it on the first time on the first try man you're just it's not even worth having all these fancy electronics if you can't do that. So that's the goal for part two. Uh, Got to make sure everything's set up right. Okay, if it's set up right, you should be able to do that. It will cover what all the rocks and fish and everything looks like later. That's the easy stuff. The hard stuff is setting things up. You have to understand what you're looking at. There's a lot of little, little angle intricacies that you got to keep in the back of your mind. Because once you get over this hump, man it's, it's game over everything else is just icing on top you know so i hope you guys enjoyed it i know it's a little long and it's a little actually it's a lot of no looking at fish yet but we'll cover that in part three so stay tuned sub to the channel and let me know what you guys think of these videos because i know can you kind of boring but that's the thing about electronics fishing it's boring in the beginning but it's very rewarding in the end all right guys see you guys on the next one Thank you.